In Russia, the import substituted ANSAD helicopter with domestic 5K-655 engines made its first flight. Our country has created an entire lineup of new engines, as well as airplanes and helicopters for them, in record time. What are these engines? At what stage is their production? And what, what will be developed next? We will talk about this, as well as about the new Hero of the Week, right after a brief summary of positive news. The Russian Aerospace Forces have received a new Il-76 MD-90A transport aircraft. At the Shredna Nevsky shipbuilding plant, a Project 12700 minesweeper has been laid down. In the Samara region, Two passenger vessels of the MPKSL project have been laid down. In the Leningrad region, the first production facility in Russia for special types of paper, which were previously purchased from European countries, has been opened. In Tomsk, the production of engineering plastics, which were uh, previously imported, has been established. In the Kaluga region, a polymer pipe production facility has been opened. In the Sverdlovsk region, a large crushed stone plant has started operations. In the Amur region, mineral powder production has begun. In Saratov, a mattress manufacturing facility has been launched. In Tambov, a pet food production plant has been opened. In the Voronezh region, a breeding and seed production complex has been established. The Russian national team won six gold, one silver, and one bronze medal at the International Artificial Intelligence Olympiad in China. This week, the light multi-purpose helicopter ANSAD, in its import-substituted version with Russian 5K-655 engines, took to the air for testing for the first time. During the flight, the crew checked the stability and controllability of the aircraft, including with the autopilot. This marked the beginning of the certification stage for the upgraded helicopter. In addition to the engine, ANSAD received new Russian onboard equipment an improved design using composite materials, a new rotor, and other systems. The modernization not only eliminated foreign components, but also improved the helicopter's performance. The 5K655 engine was developed by Russian engineers in a record five years, twice as fast as the usual time frame in global practice. But the most remarkable thing is that it is universal and will be installed not only on ANSAT, but also on Mi-34M and K-226T helicopters, the Yak-152 airplane, and drones that previously used imported engines. So just one product gives a second life to an entire line of projects that were frozen as a result of MOTOR sanctions. This week, the Kazan helicopter plant launched a new production complex covering 30,000 square meters which will allow them to increase output. Production is also actively expanding at other enterprises in the industry. And the start of certification tests for ANSAD is a good reason to take a look at the stage of other projects as well. In addition to the 5K, 655 flight tests have recently begun for another important engine, the 5K-800. It is also versatile and will be installed on the LMS-901B call regional aircraft, the new Russian Belarusian 19-seat twin-engine LMS-192 OSV, as well as on the UTS-800 training aircraft. The 5K-800 was also developed in a short time, and in a number of characteristics such as weight and fuel consumption, it has surpassed its main Czech American competitor, the H8100 engine. Next is the VK1600 for multi-purpose helicopters, like the K62. This is significant as few helicopter engines offer 1200 to 1600 horsepower. Previously, such engines were not produced in Russia. Next, in 2026, the first flights of the K62 with the VK-1600 and the new VK transmission are scheduled to begin. The VK-2500 is already a mass-produced, even more powerful engine, the workhorse of Russian aviation, 
used on the Mi-8 and K-52. In 2024, 700 of these engines were produced, and production capacity continues to expand. For example, in summer, an aluminum casting center with a 355-ton annual capacity opened in Ufa. Here, components are produced not only for the engines mentioned above, but also for the PD series. It's worth talking about it separately. The PD-14 is already in production. We saw this with our own eyes last year at the United Engine Corporation Perm Motors facility. MC-21 aircraft with updated Russian systems are completing certification and preparing for delivery to airlines, compared to the American Pratt & Whitney 1431G engine, which was previously installed on the MC-21, our PD engine turned out to be 15% more fuel efficient. In terms of life cycle cost, it's lighter and quieter, and most importantly, it's completely domestically produced. At the same time, design work to improve the characteristics of the PD-14 continues. So even its launch into mass production doesn't mean its evolution has stopped. This year, the younger brother of the PD-14, the PD-8, is entering mass production. The updated Superjets are currently undergoing certification tests with it. The first units of these engines were also recently shipped to the Taganrog Aviation Plant for installation on B-200 CHS amphibious aircraft. The tests of the PD-35 Technology Demonstrator engine are also progressing successfully. Recently, it produced 37 tons of thrust on the test stand and thus the most difficult stage of development has been successfully completed. And for the first time in history, Russia has developed its own ultra-high thrust aircraft engine. This is the result of the hard work of our engineers over the past years, and it deserves great respect. There is simply no other country in the world that has simultaneously and successfully developed so many new models of aircraft engines. And all this under every possible sanction, and in the conditions of an ongoing military conflict. But, as you have seen for yourself, most of the developments mentioned are already in the final stages. And the question arises, what happens next? Of all the developments mentioned, only one, the PD-35 engine, does not yet have a specific application. There is no aircraft for such a monster yet. However, building an airframe is typically easier and faster than making an engine. Previously, there were suggestions that the PD-35 would be installed under the wing of the wide-body IL-96, but we said that this is impossible due to structural incompatibility. It's easier to build a new aircraft from scratch. This is the path that has been decided to take in Russia, both a new wide-body long-range passenger aircraft and a new heavy military transport aircraft will be created. But not for the PD-35, but for a new engine based on it. The PD-26, with a thrust of 26 tons. Its design has already begun. Overall, a whole lineup of high-power engines for various purposes will be created based on the PD-35 including for use in ground-based gas pumping units. So what do we have in the end? Today, we can say that the country has received not just a lineup of engines, but also its own renewed import-independent school of engine building. After all, each project has given us, along with the finished product, new knowledge, technologies, factories, test stands, personnel, new or upgraded airplanes, helicopters, and a maintenance system. And apparently, today we are the only country in the world that fully controls the entire production chain, not just a direction. After all, companies like Boeing or Airbus are critically dependent on the supply of components from dozens of countries, even though they themselves actively participate in sanction policies. This poses risks for Russia and all global buyers. Even China today flies on Western engines, and in the event of worsening relations with the United States and Europe, it risks being grounded for a long time. That's why the possibility of purchasing new Russian engines has recently started being discussed in the Chinese press. 
However, for now, we already have plenty of work on our own market. We really have accomplished in the last five years what many thought was impossible. Now we need to keep moving forward without slowing down. We will keep you updated on the events. Next, the announcement and the hero story. This week, Russia and China confirmed their intention to implement the world's largest gas project, Power of Siberia 2. In addition to all the political and macroeconomic benefits for us, there is another advantage. The new pipeline will allow many Russian settlements, which previously did not have this opportunity, to be connected to gas. This means that the lives of ordinary people there will become better.